Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Analyst Collective, and welcome to the Anarchic Eye for November the 15th, 2013. Well, Hideo Kojima has explained a bit more about Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes and why the whole thing has been so damn confusing. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, this is being released essentially as a prologue to Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. And it's been released as a separate game and it's going to be a $30 title, which somehow equates to £30 in the UK, I don't know why that is, but it's going to be out. It's also cheaper as a digital copy. Now, this is essentially a prologue to that game. And a lot of people have been asking, obviously, why the hell am I paying that money for a demo? And that's a very good question to be asking. Why the fucking hell are you charging as much for a demo? As it turns out, Ground Zeroes was originally developed to follow on from Peace Walker back in the PSP in 2010. And it was going to be a PSP title. And then, it, uh, then they discovered about the next-gen systems coming along. And they realised that they'd have to basically redevelop Metal Gear Solid 5 from scratch. There's also knock-on delays from Metal Gear um, Rising. So they decided that they would release it on the current and next-gen consoles as essentially a prologue chapter because he's stated that Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain is still in development and still a fair way off. So God knows when that's going to come out, but there's at least some rationale. I'm personally not too bothered now I've seen the answers to this. The fact of the matter is that's fine. If you were originally developing it as a handheld title, you then wanted to create it in the Fox engine as a next-gen title uh, in order to help whet people's appetites for five, which isn't going to come for maybe six months, a year later. Okay, now I'm listening. Well, sticking with MGS5 Ground Zeroes, they have announced what this teaser thing was that was obviously obviously slipped to the media intentionally, that what is the PlayStation exclusive content for Ground Zeroes. It turns out to be an exclusive mission where you play as Snake from Metal Gear Solid 1. So they've made a in-game version uh, of a PlayStation 1 looking avatar, and they also in the trailer also showed the DARPA chief as well uh, in, in a deja vu mission. So it's a weird little um, Easter egg, and I kind of get why it's exclusive to the PlayStation. I'll give them that. It makes sense to make it exclusive. Now, I can understand, I don't like the idea of exclusive content, but I understand because with the PlayStation brand that Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3, or 4 have never come to an Xbox. So it makes perfect sense that if you're going to do a nod back to Metal Gear Solid, you do it on the machine that is the legacy, where the legacy machine originally had it published. So that does make a certain degree of sense. It's not actually anything really exciting. Frankly, I have about three different copies of Metal Gear Solid 1, so I'm not really that bothered about actually having him as a playable character in uh, in 5, but it's there and it's a little, little Easter egg for those who are interested to know about it. Well, there haven't really been, as far as I can see, any hardware reports with the PlayStation 4 on their launch day. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure machines will tank, I'm sure machines will die, and the people who've got those machines have every right to be pissed the fuck off, and I hope they get their bloody money back. Or at least they can repair it. It's bullshit that we have to deal with this with hardware and with software. I mean, it's the world we live in. However, one thing that is entirely unfucking forgivably stupid from Sony is they did not have the server capacity to allow everybody to log in on launch day and download the patch that you fucking knew had to be downloaded. Now, this patch was the one that was allowed to, was going to activate playing a DVD. Great, not a big deal. Um, online play. You couldn't actually play online until you downloaded this. There are a number of upgrades in this update that was required. What the fuck are you doing? You knew that millions, presumably. I don't actually know how many people bought it day one. The, the figures aren't out. But let's say, let's let's go for a conservative estimate. Let's say 100,000 people, okay? Whatever it was, it was too much for your server. For those people to all take the machine, go home within a certain number of hours, try and log on, try and register their PSN ID with that machine, and then download the patch. That is apparently too much for you, and it caused machines to crash. Now, I know some people who got a midnight release of the machine, and they didn't have those problems so much, although the PSN did go down for them at the same time. So for those who got the machine on, like, m minute zero, were okay with registering their device and getting the patch downloaded and getting playing. But the fact of the matter is that most people were getting it 
on when the stores opened, or they were having it delivered to them on that day. What the fuck are you doing? If you want to make a next-gen system that is reliant with online, it is integral to the machine, why in the name of fuck did you not have enough circuit capacity? Even if you just built a few just just for that day, just for that 40 hours, the same way you're going to need them on Christmas Day. Because a lot of people are going to have the machines. It's fucking stupid that you didn't put that in place. Well, it seems that on the 11th of December there's going to be an announcement from Bethesda, and it looks like it's going to be for Fallout 4. It's all very cryptic and all a bit obvious if you have any knowledge of the Fallout series. They have registered a website called thesurvivor2299.com. You go on there, there's a countdown to the 11th of December. And there's Morse code playing, which is what you get that often the radio. The, the font looks consistent. The name, obviously, it's often there's often a, a title for the characters in Fallout. And the type, the year seems consistent as well, because what was it? Uh, New Vegas was 2277, I think. And so this one being 2299 is a nice little jump forward in the timeline. So it seems very much like Bethesda are going to announce a new Fallout game, and it will be on the 11th of December. Well, as it's the PlayStation 4 launch day, Naughty Dog have announced a new title. They said they were working on a title, they said it wasn't going to be The Last of Us, and it's been confirmed it's going to be an Uncharted title for the PlayStation 4. Now, I've enjoyed the, I've enjoyed the Uncharted series. I thought 3 dropped out a bit. I thought that their over-reliance on, uh, on melee combat somewhat detracted from it, but some of the... The fact of the matter is, the game is still enjoyable to me. I did enjoy the series. Um, a lot of people have been talking that they think that they're going to reboot the series with a new protagonist. After listening to the teaser trailer, which will be linked in the description field below, it doesn't sound like it. It almost feels to me like it's it's uh, the trailer was somewhat is going to be the bat. I think it's going to be the antagonist. I think it's going to be the guy coming after Drake because he betrayed him. He's talking about being betrayed and being left and having things taken from you. And I actually think it's going to be someone coming after Drake. That's what I think. So it could be another um, could be another heir to the Drake legacy. I don't know. There's nothing to be said. There's just a picture of a map. And a speaking, and people speaking. I don't actually think it's going to be a new protagonist. At least I hope not, because it just seems stupid. There's enough rebooting of protagonists, and I'm personally, although he's a very quippy character, I'm not sick of Nathan Drake. He's an entertaining character, and the banter that they have in the games is enjoyable. If you, you know, if you're going to be rebooting your first party titles like Infamous, you may not want to be doing it with Uncharted as well, Sony. I think that's a poor move, and I think that your developers know that. I think Naughty Dog should have probably enough sense to stick with what will sell, and what will probably sell is having a next-gen title with Nathan Drake at the helm. It seems yet another developer has been listening to the community, because Eidos Montreal have heard what people have got to say about Thief. Now, I personally am very sceptical about Thief. I'm a big fan of the old series. And it sticks in my throat they've replaced the main voice actor, let's face it. That is, that is a main reason also. It looked like it was full of set pieces and QTEs and shit like that. And it's not something I was interested in out of a Thief title. Now, whatever. Now, it turns out that they have listened to people who have said that. They have confirmed two things for the game that makes me happier about it. First of all, they said they've removed QTEs completely. They've said they've seen the fan reaction, they don't want to piss off the fans, they will just remove every QTE from the game. Now, whether that means it's going to be uh, all done in little cutscenes are going to appear, or whatever the hell they're going to do, but they're going to remove the QTEs, which is nice. There's also going to be a hardcore difficulty mode, which they've announced, which again is nice. And it's going to come with a series of options. It appears that you can select or deselect in order to make your playthrough as challenging as you want, which would be nice, because, for example, I'd like to be able to... I know that you don't have to use it. I'd like to be able to turn off the stupid magical eye shit, where you can see stuff and, you know, it's just all the stuff that was taken from Absolution. Uh, really, all from Arkham Asylum, really. They've taken that idea of that, that detective vision and they've just bunged it into so many titles. So... I'm more positive, to be honest, about the Thief reboot now I've heard that. And now I've heard that they are listening to gamers when they see something and they say, that is bullshit. So the people who keep coming and saying, oh, don't waste your time, don't talk about these things, they're just not going to do whatever they want. Really, motherfucker? They're listening. As long as you're saying the right thing and as long as you are saying, make me happy 
and I'll think about buying your game. Not just giving them shit, but if you say, seriously, not buying the game in the state it's in. Change this, change this, change this, and then we'll talk. Well, it seems they are at least listening. Right, well, I'd just like to confirm something that I mentioned in a previous video that I didn't have the facts on, that now I absolutely do. It turns out that the PlayStation 4's hard drive, which will be replaceable, which is damn good news, considering, as I mentioned in the video yesterday, about the hard drive capacity and about the fact that you can't plug in external hard drives like you can with the Xbox One. It is definitely been confirmed by a website that stripped the PS4 down to its components, and the link's in the description field, as with everything else I talk about, that the hard drive is non-proprietary and you can just swap it out. So that is good. Now, well, some of the, a few people mentioned it in the comments, and I'd just like to confirm to everyone watching this, it turns out you can do that. Now, I'm guessing there's going to have to be some kind of method of transfer there because they're going to have to have some system in place, whether you have to use your computer, format, the, format this hard drive, um, and then switch off. I don't really know how they're going to handle this, but... Good news being, you can at least upgrade your hardware in the in the PS4. Well, at the, only the hard drive, of course, but that in itself is some good news. Well, the discussion of resolution of next-gen systems just keeps on cropping up, because it now turns out that Assassin's Creed 4 is in its current in-box state, not natively 1080p on the PlayStation 4, as they claimed it is, but it will be once they patch it. Another game that's claimed to be running natively on the PlayStation 4 at 1080p, but it has to be patched in order to do that. Because you didn't develop it to be that, and you need to release high-def texture packs to up upgrade the engine. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? You're basically taking old games, games that can be played on current-gen systems, polishing them up a little bit, and sticking them on a new machine and saying, spend a fortune on it. What is actually the point of buying Assassin's Creed 4 on the PlayStation 4, if you could buy it on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. What is the point? You've clearly designed it for those machines in mind. You've clearly designed it to work perfectly fine on those machines. And then, you've done a shoddy upscaling job, you've just polished up the engine a bit, stuck a bit more in there, and hoped that that would be enough. That is not a next-gen experience, that is a slightly polished, that's like an HD collection. And not even a good HD collection, it's like a Konami HD collection. Sort that fucking shit out and start making games to run natively on next-gen systems using the actual machine's capacity, not taking an out-of-date system. As you say, it's old tech. Current-gen systems are old tech, you can make it for them perfectly fine. Well, you say that, you have to patch the fucking thing. You can't even make it for old-gen systems properly without having to patch the goddamn things. Jesus. Sort your shit out and start making games that actually fucking do as they're meant to do from day one without a massive great fucking patch to make it actually a next-gen game. What a load of bullshit. Ubisoft and Activision have been caught doing this so far. I don't want to see any more of it. It's fucking bullshit. Anyway, guys, you've been looking through the 2020 vision of the Anarchy Guy. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys later.